Hello, this is Universal Soul Love. I'm Detective David Love. And I'm Dr. Lana Love. Welcome to our show. Our show, Universal Soul Love, is an internet talk show that uh, focuses very much on spirituality, um, man's place in on Earth, um, the new Earth, uh, perhaps uh, the ability to form a new way of life that would be better, mm -hmm. and um, the ability to perhaps raise the vibration of humanity to a higher level, which is something we very much need nowadays. We certainly do. And today we're here doing an impromptu interview at Ethereum Eco Village in Australia. We're very excited to be uh, to have our special guest Taylor with us, who's uh, very knowledgeable in the ringing cedar models, which is a type of um, soft sustainable living community model that we're very interested in that that uh, Ethereum Eco Village uh, promotes. So we're here to uh, talk about that today. Welcome to our show, Taylor. And Taylor's also very knowledgeable about permaculture. Yes. So, the, the Ringing Cedars uh, is a series of ten books which was written by a, a Russian author, Vladimir Meager, who, he was a Siberian trader. And uh, Vladimir supposedly met Anastasia, who is a very beautiful, uh, spiritually evolved uh, woman living in uh, the deep in the forests of Russia who is uh, always runs around, walks around naked and uh, <laughs> uh, is able to um, be very deeply connected with nature and mm -hmm. comes up with some incredibly deep and profound and mind-blowing um, truths mm -hmm. and about suggestions, suggested ways in which mankind should live rather than the way that uh, we live currently. So, about how we should be living connected with nature. And of course we've had many shows about the condition of the planet and uh, the, talking about the solutions, possible solutions, and we've had many guests on our show discussing these, these things, climate change and um, global conflict and uh, all sorts of... We've shared lots of uh, great ideas on Universal Soul Love. I don't know a lot about Ringing Cedars, but I'm very interested in hearing more about it. So. Let's get into it. So, perhaps Taylor, you could tell us a little bit about when you started reading about the Ringing Cedars and what uh, the profound effect it's had on your life. Sure. Um, yes, I found the Ringing Cedars um, while studying uh, a permaculture course. Uh, I first heard about them during the course and I later on uh, found them in a bookshop and um, didn't quite catch me at first, and then later on I, I, I was in the bookshop again and I picked up the, I think it was the fourth or the fifth book, and that's when it, I really started to get into it and read, begin, began to read through the whole series. Um, I mean, it does captivate quite a bit because it's written as a, as a story. It's a captivating but, story. Yeah, but we don't know whether Anastasia, Anastasia actually exists or not, but uh, I think, Taylor, you mm. think that she must exist because of the quality of the content. Mm. Um, yeah, and the effect that it's had on people, mm. including myself, as far as wanting to basically... It just changes your whole understanding of... Not only history, but family and uh, religion and sexuality and nature and just everything because it's it's quite profound, I guess. But it, it takes time, and it sort of re it it evolves as you read the books because oh. Vladimir meets her and then he he goes away and then he comes back and actually has a child to. Her when he first meets her, a little bit after he first meets her, and then he comes back and the child's growing and um, and all through this time she it, she basically teaches him more and more profound wisdom, mm, doesn't she? Yeah, and it sort of expands on the same kind of themes through the book. Um, one of them, which is divine nutrition, which is this um, idea of eating without thinking. Mm. Mm. So um, she describes it as the way that God intended us for, for us to eat, mm -hmm. which uh, is basically 
from nature directly and there's a reason everything ripens on the trees as it does at the time mm. that it does. It's because it's the optimum time for us to have that food. Um, mm. And basically we don't need to think about eating, we can actually just eat purely intuitively as we go walking through our garden and this is the whole concept, basic like idea of the book is to create gardens for ourselves and for our family and to pass those gardens on to our children and for their children to receive, to pass it on to their children so it becomes our homeland so to speak which is something that we've all lost I think. It's a very, very different concept of eating from it, what we have It now. sounds like we, I'm getting the sense that we overcomplicate things and instead of just following what the Creator has given us, the divine plan, and just following Mother Nature, which I think is, Mother Nature is quite good at when you look at the life and you look at the complexity of it and the intricacy of everything, mm -hmm. um, clearly we're sort of going against what's natural and not, and it, there's a much simpler well, path that we can follow. Yeah, and there's a there's a reason why we have these schedules put on us. Mm -hmm. It's because it suits someone else's needs mm -hmm. to for us to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner because we can work in between or we can go to school between those times. Even though it's we might not necessarily be hungry at lunchtime, it's lunchtime, so we should be eating, right? <laughs> it's it's not it's an artificial system which is basically this belief that we've created. Or I mean, the whole system itself is, is artificial and mm. basically Anastasia is just taking away what's artificial and just leaving us with what, what's real and basically with nature mm. and just sort of pointing at what's the most important thing in life. And I guess in regards to whether Anastasia is real or what the reality of Anastasia's presence on this planet is, it, I think we've concluded you know, prior to the show and talking about this, that uh, it's the message that's important and it's sort of reminiscent of uh, Carlos Castaneda's books and whether or not Don Juan was a real historical figure or not, which isn't as so important as the, the message and the information that was given. And in fact, we're going to have George Neo on our show shortly as a special guest as well, who's uh, been on our show in the past and uh, we'll probably be discussing a little bit of that as well. But I think it's just that we from what I'm gathering from what you're saying, it's more about, it's the... It's the message, the message. and also the movement. It is, I understand yes. the Ring Cedars series has actually sparked quite a, a profound mm. movement. And You were telling You've us about, um, yeah, about Russia and, and mm. how, many, um, how many people have been influenced by the books. Because mm. the, the book, I believe, promotes a particular way of having a garden and having a family and a community mm. living. Would you tell us a bit about that, Taylor? Yeah, so in Russia there's now close to 400 villages that oh, that's have, a lot. Wow. have grown out, inspired by the Ring Cedar books. Um, and not just in Russia, um, Ukraine and Belarus, mm -hmm. there's quite a number, probably at least a couple hundred. Um, and it's spreading through Europe and the rest of the world. I think the books are translated into 20 or 30 languages now. and um, it's, yeah, it's really quite, quite a, a significant movement, mm -hmm. and that's in the space of um, 20 years. So, um, that's sort of, people say, um, is Anastasia real? And I, I kind of go, well, the proof <laughs> is in the pudding kind of yes. thing. Like, I can see what you mean. Um, and the effects are pretty positive. Like, I've actually visited one of the villages. I was just and, about um, to ask you this. Oh, yeah, right. and it's, it's a really beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot of freedom mm -hmm. for... The children to mm -hmm. to play and to to be together to run around mm -hmm. and yeah people people were very healthy I have to say like a lot healthier than I've seen people mm -hmm. in the western in western countries mm -hmm. um, mainly because of their lifestyle but um, yeah it's it's really beautiful movement mm -hmm. and. I hope that it spreads across the whole world because... I, I wonder, I mean, villages, villages villages are pretty... Um, there was certainly sort of a big basis of uh, of life in Russia. I wonder what how the the villages promoted by the Ring Cedars are different mm. to the ordinary Russian Yeah, I mean, village. can you comment on how 
you know, yeah, how it, how people actually live and how this sort of plays out. This yeah, model. so the basic idea is each family receives a hectare, or mm -hmm. buys a hectare, um, and they create their homestead, their family homestead. And the idea is to plant um, a garden and to plant a forest, to dig a pond, to build a house, and to create a, a living fence around the outside mm -hmm. and to leave space around each hectare so that um, there's basically each hectare is sort of like a little cell in a body so to speak mm -hmm. okay. and um, they they don't sell their hectare, they just pass it to their children mm -hmm. and then their children can live there and pass it on or they can mm -hmm. create their own homestead and Anastasia talks about an, an ancient an old culture that was spread across most of Europe um, and this is basically how they live. Was that the ancient Vedic? Um, yeah, she refers to them as, as Vedic, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I, when I heard that I, I thought it was interesting and as I looked into um, language and the language tree, <coughs> I saw that the even linguists say the same thing that in Europe at one time there was one language spoken by pretty much all of Europe that they called Proto-Indo-European. Okay. Okay. So she says it's basically the same thing, that this culture spread across all of Europe mm. and it was slowly um, sort of, there's, it's a long story and most of the, the deeper history that she goes into is in book six okay. um, about how things changed over the time and how this system was set up even right back to um, ancient Egyptian times mm. and how we've slowly been led out of our gardens, mm. literally, mm. and into um, another world that's now... Well, it's like Adam and Eve well, being... Yeah. being uh, yeah, you know, I'd heard this as well from one of my guides was telling me, and I'm sort of going off a bit off topic I guess, but one of my guides had told me that um, a long time ago, I don't know, before pre-recorded history, that there was a common language. In fact, it wasn't even a, an official sort of worded language. Everyone spoke a sort of an unspoken language that I don't, I don't quite understand what it was I was told, but there was a common language and it was much simpler and things were understood perfectly without all the complications of the languages that we have. Anyhow, just a little side comment. Yeah. But uh, it just out of curiosity, how does um, so how does one of these communities work in terms of in terms of business and schooling yeah. and family life? So and, pretty yeah. much all the villages create their own schools. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I visited had a, a, a school there, and some of the some of the um, parents taught in the school. Um, there's homeschooling, and there's also. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to build their tourism at the moment and there's um, lots of festivals and gatherings happening all the time and they're bringing back a lot of the ancient, the old celebrations celebrating the, the equinoxes, the solstice mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, they have really lovely festivals happening all over Russia all the time um, and it's sort of like, as Anastasia paints it, the, the vision of Russia becoming this sort of garden state mm. where pretty much every family lives in their homestead. And that is the great sort of strength of the country because if you think about it, if one, if a family is self-sufficient or is on their land and can provide for their own needs, mm. they're strong. If, if they're not and they're dependent on welfare or they're dependent on all these artificial systems and anything affects those systems, mm. they're, they're that shock is felt through yeah. not only the family but through the whole state, the whole country. It's disempowering, you're giving your power away to someone else when you don't need to do that. So this is certainly a way of strengthening the individual mm. and the family, growing their own food. And yeah. Very much about self-sustainable mm. living, which we certainly yeah. endorse and, they, and promote here. They had a gift of. in the village I visited, and I think quite a few of the others, they have uh, gift shops, they, mm -hmm. they make beautiful, incredible carved wood and everything. Like, um, spoons and mm -hmm. forks and knives and bowls and little little pieces of anything. It's all beautifully hand wooden carved. Um, there's lots of wood carving. And there's lots of um, handcrafts and 
beautiful um, embroidered clothes and a lot of folk crafts with mm. the old crafts because Russia really has a strong mm. um, awareness of their heritage and their sort of the older culture mm. that was there before Christianity because mm -hmm. they yeah they haven't really had like a lot of um, it, it's less it's been less um, sort of influence changed over time from religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has, but it's it's sort it's of really the, the 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 older the, culture. Perhaps. Yeah, I think so. But even that isn't quite what Anastasia is talking about, because there is a movement there that's like um, the old believers. But it's it's sort of it's even older than that in the sense it's mm -hmm. it's like what she calls the Vedic mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. people. I don't know if our listeners know this or if we talk about this much, but Lana Love has a Russian background ancestry. You speak fluent Russian. I do. Which I, I love. Do. Yes, yes. Very no. proud of your Russian background. I've only visited one, uh, Russia on one occasion, mm -hmm. but um, certainly it's just really lovely to, to, to hear that, um, that the, the books are promoting um, a way of life that may have originated perhaps in, in Russia or mm -hmm. perhaps be why it spread throughout Europe, but um, yeah. that's very I've beautiful. heard a lot of your stories about Russia, mm. so, so, so. Mm. Um, I'm just wondering, how, so how, would, how do people's beliefs and values and um, their ideologies fit into just what sounds like a, an intentional community? Um, from what I gathered, like, there were people in that village that weren't really even readers, that were maybe Christian or had some other belief system. Um, but they're sort of all united, I guess, by wanting to create um, a self-sufficient home. Uh, it did seem like a little bit of a, a thing that can sort of loosen the strength of a community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, I think, I mean, once you've read the books, you sort of understand why you want to create this, why you want to plant a tree, and what the significance of all of it is. Um, and... It is beautiful that it is owned by the, the family because uh, I know I mean, villages, the, the village system is very widespread throughout the history of, of Russia, but of course it was used to be the, the wealthy landowners that would rent out the land and then the kolhozes, the, 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 the village system, was owned by the government, whereas now the people actually own the land, which is very different. So I'm just trying to check myself on this a bit, because I know recently I talked to someone um, in this area who, they have a, it's a Christian type of intentional community and they share everything, they share their money, they share their resources, and everything is, so I don't know how they exactly the, do this, but this is not. This is a different, different system. Model. It's different not that model. way. Yes, okay. yes. And I think we wanted, um, I think George was going to talk a little bit about, George and here, about the economic model. Yeah, I could uh, say a few words on yes. that. Alright, well we'd like to have George Neo so step in as our guest. Okay, so I'm gonna, are we going to do I'm this? I'm going to stop it for a moment okay. because okay. I'm going to run out of space and I forgot to delete one okay. of the other files. Sure. Just hang on a moment.